Today on Trucks, Stace and I continue a three-week series that'll transform Chevy's Extreme S10 into a muscle-bound sport truck. The four bangers gone, a donor LT1 is taking its place. After that, we'll drop the hammer on the Searing Silverado that has the same heartbeat as a Corvette. Then it's back to the shop to show you how to turn your off-road vehicle into a submarine. That's all today on Trucks. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. If you caught the show last week, you watched us pull the stock four cylinder out of our brand new Extreme S10 to make room for that donor LT1 we got out of a 93 Camaro. Now, the reason we're doing Project LT Extreme is so we can hunt down those unsuspecting Camaros and Mustangs and give them a first hand look at our tail lights when we stomp down on over 300 horsepower. Of course, we're going to have it hidden under the hood of an innocent little S10. But filling our rear view mirror with Corvette Mustang front grills isn't near enough. We also want to have a muscle truck that's reliable enough to use as a daily driver. That's why we're going to go with wheel to wheels upgrade kit and taking all the guesswork out of cramming a small block into a very tight space. Now that we have the motor bolted in and the headers on, I'm going to go ahead and install these O2 sensors. Time to deal with this bundle of snakes. It's a good idea at this point to take your wiring harness and spread it out. That way you'll have a better idea how it's all going to be routed. While Stace is sorting out the wiring harness, I'll go ahead and get the starter on. It's a whole lot easier to put it on before you hook up the exhaust. It makes your electrical connections easier to deal with as well. Wheel to Wheel supplies custom fuel lines with their kit. They go around the body supports and into the engine compartment. We're going to use wire ties to hold them tightly in place because constant vibration could cause them to wear through. Now we're ready to start putting our extreme back together. First thing we're going to do is get the inner fenders in place. Make sure you know where your wiring harness is so you don't pinch anything in the process. Over on the driver's side, the new fuel lines as well as the brake lines and the wiring all tuck inside the inner fender. With the fender in place, I can go ahead and hook up the automatic braking system to its proper lines. Now remember, any time you disconnect brake lines, you need to bleed your system before you leave your driveway. In order to finish up the passenger side, I had to bolt on the radiator overflow as well as the computer. All that's left is to hose clamp the power steering reservoir to the AC dryer. Now we can make the connections to the computer. Don't get freaked out by this. There's only one way they can go in, so there's no way you can screw it up. Another thing that's impossible to screw up is putting the accessory bracket on the right side of the motor. Just line up the bolt holes. Once it's in place, I'm going to hook up the power steering pump so Mel can run the lines to the reservoir. Now it's time to put on the water pump. Make sure that you use a good quality sealer on these gaskets so you don't have to come back and fix a leak later on. I've also used Teflon tape on the threads of the bolts because they go into the water jackets. Also, don't forget to use this clamp to keep the plug wires from getting wound up in the pulleys. One of the biggest problems when you do a motor swap is the cooling system is usually inadequate, which causes the motor to overheat. Our system is going to use a set of small electric fans that mount right to the AC condenser. I've used a pair of tin snips to trim around here to make room for the 12-inch fan. Once the condenser is in place, it's ready to go in the truck. Now, before we can put the fans on, we need to finish assembling the motor, like putting on the alternator and the belt. Actually, now's a good time to check and make sure you haven't left anything disconnected before you put the core support on. Speaking of which, you about ready, man? Yeah. That oh, in. that looks great. Yep. Pops right on there, man. Once the support's in place, you can bolt on your inner fender. Make sure you leave the bolts just a little loose so you can make adjustments later on. The fuse relay box is next. The modules are plug-ins that are held in place by screws. Mount the box to the support and tuck all your wires out of the way. Now before you go any further with the front end assembly, route the wiring harness for your headlights through the radiator support. 
Believe me, this is when marking your connectors really pays off. Now, Mel talked earlier about overheating problems when it comes to doing a motor swap, so we're definitely not going to shortchange ourselves when it comes to the radiator. This Griffin four-row aluminum radiator will definitely keep things cool. A neat trick is to put cardboard over the cooling fins to keep this thing safe when you're putting it in. Now it's time to give our Extreme its identity back. First thing we're going to do is put the fenders back on. Now it's important to start a straight seam like this door here and work your way forward. We're going to make our space about a quarter inch wide from top to bottom before we can snug the bolts down. Once the fenders are hooked up, put on the bumper and the grill, hook up your headlights, and our wolf is almost fully closed. <laughs> Nearly, but not quite. Don't go away. Project LT Extreme picks up some speed after the break. Later in the show, we've got a truck for you that's got an unmistakable heartbeat. But up first, Stace and I continue the extreme transformation. Project LT Extreme is up next. I can't figure this out. Let's pull this out. Yeah. Cool. Welcome back to the shop. Now that we've got our donor LT1 crammed into place, it's time to dive into the cockpit. Where we not only need to figure out a way to control our power, but also to give ourselves a way to monitor the vital signs of this transplant. Now, Mel's already removed the stock shifter, so I'm going to tear into these stock gauges. To control the power, we're using B&M's hammer shifter for automatic trannies, and to monitor the vital signs, we've placed video analog gauges in the custom-made dash panel that comes with Wheel to Wheels kit. How about we work a trade, bud? <laughs> You're getting the short end of that deal. Now, the reason we're using VDO gauges is because they're a lot more accurate than the stockers, and they look cool, too. Now, putting the gauges in is really simple. You just hook up the corresponding wires, and bolt it in with these mounting brackets using the stock hardware. Now before we can put our new shifter on, we have to get the extreme up in the air so we can do all the work underneath without having to slide around on the ground. <laughs> That's something Mel really hates. First thing we need to do in here is make the marks for our shifter. Put it on the floor with the stick in the park position. Then you can mark and drill your holes for the mounting bolts. Now if your carpet's in the way, don't drill through it or it'll unravel like a sweater. It also might be necessary to shim the shifter with washers so it'll sit level. Next, you'll need to mark and drill a location for the shifter cable about three inches ahead of the left front mounting hole. All right, Mel, go ahead and feed that cable to me. There we go. It's also good insurance whenever you do a donor swap to change a rear tranny seal as well as the fluid. Regardless of how many miles you think it might have on it. I'm also going to go with this chrome B&M pan, which they say cools better, and I say looks better. Now, since this pan is deeper than the stocker, we need to add a filter spring, as well as a longer extension tube. Don't over tighten the bolts, or you could bend the pan and cause leaking. This would also be a good time to hook up the lines to the transmission cooler. Once you have your cable hooked up, your reverse lights and your neutral safety switch, you can bolt in your shifter and reassemble it. Now this is a ratcheting shifter, which means you can slam it from gear to gear without the fear of overshifting or hitting reverse, which is great for racing or, uh, you know, driving around town, cruising legally. <clears throat> but before we can obey all the rules of the road, dang nut, we need to take this cable and hook it up to the transmission. Now we had to put in new fuel lines for our thirsty LT1 with its fuel injection. 
We also need to change out the pump in the tank because the stalker's just not going to cut it. Make sure when you take your tank down, you've either drained it or run it dry. It's also a good idea to have someone give you a hand pulling it out. The new pump and pickup assembly from wheel to wheel slides right into the tank. The kit also comes with a brand new O-ring. Put the tank in, make your connections, and don't forget to hook up the gauge. Now wheel to wheel supplies a drive shaft that'll handle the torque and power of the LT1. Best of all, you don't have to take measurements and have one custom made. We're just about finished with Project LT Extreme. Next week we'll dig into the rear end exhaust and even put some stripes on it before we spin the wheels off it. But don't go away, trucks will be right back after the break. Later on Trucks, we'll show you how to help your vehicle breathe underwater with a snorkel kit. But up first, we'll take a look at a 99 Silverado that bears a striking resemblance to a legendary family member. We wanted the car to just echo and scream, vet. This is truly a working man's Corvette because here's a vehicle everybody can own. It's practical, it has great utility, and it embodies the uh, spirit and fever that, that echoes Corvette for all the years Corvettes have been around. TV's first look at the searing Silverado is coming up. Well, you know, what can I say? Performance West, they're at it again. This time they brought us what they thought a 99 Silverado should look like. And this is the television debut of what they've dubbed the Searing Silverado. First thing you can't help but notice is the front bumper, which bears a striking resemblance to the brand new Corvette. And with this LS1 inspired Vortec V8, it'll spin the wheels like one too. We took a Whipple charger and put it on that engine with, with awesome results with this new engine. It's just such a wonderful performing engine. It spools up so quick. It makes such immediate power. Uh, in, in throughout the RPM range, the power band is unbelievable. Uh, and you can get the Searing Silverado in a stick shift at five speed such as this one, or an automatic. And that gives the enthusiast so much more. The guy that always wants to shift his own gears, here's a, here's a vehicle that's going to put a smile on his face from ear to ear. You're going to have to peel it off at the end of the day. He's just having way too much fun. The Silverado gobbles up the road with Z-rated BFGs on 18-inch Colorado custom wheels. And with a 4-inch drop in the front and 6-inch slam in the rear, this vehicle pins your ears back with sports car handling in a sports truck package. The lowered stance is set off by sleek ground effects, but it's when you make your way around to the rear end, <laughs> that's when you realize this truck is a blood brother to the vet. We wanted the car to just echo and scream, vet. This is truly a working man's Corvette because here's a vehicle everybody can own. It's practical, it has great utility, and it embodies the uh, spirit and fever that, that echoes Corvette for all the years Corvettes have been around. Well, there's no doubt it looks good, feels good, and sounds pretty good as well. But what we really want to know is what it's got under the hood. Peg it, Stace. <laughs> Bottom line, the scream and the numbers don't lie. 330 horse and foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. Awesome. And for a base price of around 28 grand, this is one sports truck that'll blast you into the next millennium. Of course, you'll have to get in line behind us first. Don't go away, we have more trucks right after the break. Up next on Trucks, Stace has this week's quick tip for you, and we'll show you how to turn your off-road vehicle into a submarine by bolting on that snorkel kit.
Welcome back, everybody. As you can see, our Jeep Wrangler here is a pretty serious off-road machine, complete with its lift, lockers, and 35-inch meats. And the mud? That's a dead giveaway. It ain't scared to leave the pavement, either. Now, everybody knows that when you're playing around in the mud or the water, you can't always tell how deep it is until, oops, it's too late. And there's nothing worse than drowning out in a nasty old creek or mud hole somewhere. Yeah, that's no joke. And that's exactly what we're going to avoid with the Safari Snorkel from ARB. The kit comes complete with the snorkel body itself, hardware, and all the brackets you'll need to make deep water crossings a part of your 4x experience. The first thing we need to do is move the windshield washer bottle to the other side to get it out of the way. Drill two holes in the diagonal strut and bolt the bracket on. Now the wiring and the water tube need to be extended. So cut the plug off the factory loom, strip the insulation, put in the extension loom and crimp the wire connectors. Don't forget to hook up the longer water tube to the bottle. Next, tape the template that comes with the kit on the rear corner of the left fender and mark your hole positions. Now you can drill the holes through the inner and outer panels. Of course, we need to cut a hole for our air intake. I prefer to use a hole saw for this because it makes a much cleaner hole. Once your snorkel's bolted on, run a bead of silicone around the holes for a watertight seal. We also need to modify the air cleaner by installing the new intake casting on the side of the air cleaner body with the pop rivets. The kit also comes with a pair of plugs for the old intake port. Once it's modified, put the air cleaner back in place and hook it to the snorkel using the supplied hose. Finally, set the air ram in place and tighten it down. Now, even if you're not going to run in mud or water, you can still benefit from a snorkel because it performs a lot better than a stock air filter in a dusty situation, too. And let's face it, for around $300, it's about as close as you'll ever get to driving a submarine. You can make a waterproof container for tools or food or whatever with three or four inch PVC pipe. Just cap one end, then use a threaded removable cap on the other for easy access. It's also a good idea to use smaller pieces of PVC pipe to repair your radiator or heater hoses. Just slide it inside, then take those extra hose clamps that you should always keep with you and tighten it down. Stay with us. Mel and I will be back with truck gear right after the break. And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for this week's truck gear. Ever been out in the sticks with a flat tire? Tire pliers from Outback Products can put that worry behind you. It breaks the bead so you can remove the tire from the wheel and make the repairs that will get you back on the trail. This tool can be used on 10 to 16 and a half inch rims with four, five, and six stud lug patterns. It goes for about $120, which isn't bad when you consider the alternative. The Mighty Vac from the Eastwood Company solves an age-old problem by making it possible for one person to bleed their brakes at the wheel without mashing the pedal or wasting any fluid. It also develops and holds 25 pounds of vacuum so you can test various engine functions. Make bleeding your brakes a one-man job with the Mighty Vac for about 60 bucks. That's going to do it for this week's truck gear. Let's see what Mel and I have for you next week on trucks. Stace and I finished transforming Chevy's Extreme S10 into a muscle-bound sport truck. We'll lay on the stripes, then melt off the rubber on our Extreme pickup. After that, we'll show you how to build a ramp that'll help grade your vehicle's off-road capability. Then we'll hit the trail to show you how to get the most out of your experience behind the wheel. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to trucking with you again next week. Let's check out the sound system. Dude, you're going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> But there's more. <laughs> Man, that's an awesome sound. That's the 
sound. The pipes are right here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Trucks is an RTM production.